I just want to start with saying thank you to whoever subscribed to my channel. You who have taken the time to subscribe to my channel and show me support, I appreciate you way more than you know. You made my day, my week, my month. This is going to be part two in the four part series about how to improve your milk production. So this is kind of a complicated topic, improving milk production, and it's something that new moms are really concerned about. And so I'm breaking it down into four parts. Part one's about hydration, part two, this one is about nutrition, part three is about action, and part four, surprisingly important, is mindset. So if you haven't seen all four videos, I definitely recommend checking them all out. They're all super short, super easy to digest, and they all have a ton of information and really cool little nuggets of their own. So yeah, give them a watch. It'll help you help your baby, give you the confidence and the tools you need to make sure that they're really well nourished. It feels really good. I've been breastfeeding my baby for almost 17 months now, and it's going great. I'm really lucky that I have been able to breastfeed my baby for almost 17 months now. She is really well nourished and I'm really happy that we're able to you know, have that together. All right, so um, let's see, nutrition and breastfeeding. So if you are breastfeeding a baby, you need between 2,000 and 2,800 calories. That's a lot of calories. A lot of new mothers are kind of blown away by how much they're supposed to be consuming and some people aren't consuming enough and when they find out that they were supposed to be consuming that much they're like whoa so yeah you you do need to eat more basically whatever you were eating before you should be eating 300 to 400 more calories a day what those calories are made of matters quality and quantity are both important here you can't just eat more macaroni and cheese or french fries or insert whatever great delicious god-awful thing you're thinking of here you need to be eating more fruits and vegetables and you need to be getting more calcium so let's talk about it um, first way I get more fruits and vegetables into my diet every day I start every day with a smoothie so you can start with a blender it's a great place to start if you're making a smoothie in the morning and in that blender you can pour if it's a single serving for just you um, one and a half to two cups of a liquid like coconut water this one's my favorite really delicious you can also get um, Trader Joe's brand coconut water big container like this three dollars you don't have to spend a lot of money if you don't want to do coconut water also really good for breastfeeding almond milk Almond milk is a great source of calcium and vitamin E. You need to be getting more calcium if you're breastfeeding or if you're pregnant. So almond milk was like a huge staple when I was pregnant. I was just guzzling this to up my calcium intake. This is a really good way to do that. This one's unsweetened, so if you're trying to cut back on sugar, no sugar in this, really great way to go. Third option, if you are looking for a third option, oat milk. Oat milk, really, really good. For breast milk production. I'm really into oat milk right now. I didn't know I liked it. I just started drinking it recently. And you can also use this on cereal. I'll, I'll get more into that later. Okay, so making the smoothie, you've got one and a half to two cups of liquid, your choice. And then I'd recommend a banana, frozen fruit, if you're doing strawberries or blueberries or berries in general, you always want to buy organic because the other ones are really pesticide ridden. If you're doing mango or pineapple, there's some fruits where you don't have to worry about organic. I get this organic fruit at Trader Joe's for really cheap. It's not expensive and I've been doing it for a long time. It's delicious. They have a really good wild blueberry too. Not organic, but no pesticides on wild fruit something to think about. Really delicious. The wild blueberries kind of taste like a little bit of like chocolate or acai. Really tasty. And then the other thing I do to really up the nutrient content of my smoothies is I add a protein powder or a nutritional powder. This one right here is the one I've been using for mm, like a year now. I like it a lot and I'll include a link to buy this in the description if you're interested. I usually get it at Target or at Fred Meyer for pretty cheap, but if you want a link to buy it on Amazon, I'd be happy to provide it for you, and I do get incentivized if you do click and buy through there. 
So full disclosure there. Another thing I like to add in my smoothies is a banana because it just really adds to the texture and the flavor. So I add a banana every day. Yeah, the Bob's Red Mill one um, is a hemp seed one. I haven't bought that in a while, but I did really like that one a lot too. Hemp seed is a great source of omega fatty acids. Really good for your brain, really good for the baby's brain. So yeah, those are some really good options. You blend that all together in a smoothie, drink that every day, and that's definitely going to help you when you wake up in the morning dehydrated from breastfeeding your baby throughout the night. All right, so smoothies are the first thing I would highly recommend. Then let's see, you need to get more veggies in your diet, fruits and vegetables. So being a new mom is pretty exhausting, and sometimes you're like scattered all over the place trying to keep up with everything that you need to keep up with, doctor's visits, taking care of the baby, taking care of yourself cleaning the house, taking a shower, everything's just a lot. So I find it easier to buy frozen vegetables. These ones are my favorite. I get these at Trader Joe's too for really cheap organic vegetable blend. I also think organic frozen spinach is a really good way to go. If you can find ways to squeeze more of that into your diet, what I usually do is I make soups several times a week, I make stir fries, I make casseroles, I make pasta dishes. Sometimes it's like, you know, red lentil pasta or garbanzo bean pasta, but I'll squeeze more veggies into our daily routine that way just by adding a bunch of frozen veggies to those dishes. And that really helps me increase my veggie intake. And usually if I'm beefing it up, quote unquote, with these vegetables, then I have a bunch of leftovers that I can put in the fridge that makes it really easy for me to eat vegetables the next day too. So fruits and vegetables frozen doesn't go bad in your freezer if you end up getting really busy and forgetting that you need to eat them or getting distracted. But yeah, that, that helps me a lot to get more fruits and veggies, which helps me get more nutrients, which helps me produce really good quality breast milk for my baby. Okay, so if you're breastfeeding, definitely take a prenatal or a postnatal vitamin. I have been taking a postnatal vitamin for a few months. I used to just take prenatals. I highly recommend getting one with omega fatty acids like DHA because it's really good for your brain. It's really good for the baby's brain. There's a lot of good options out there. But yeah, prenatal vitamins. Then when you are breastfeeding your baby, your pediatrician will usually recommend that you give your baby vitamin D, which I do. But you can also increase the vitamin D in your breast milk by taking a supplement. So this is the one I'm taking. And I'll include a link for that as well. And it's good for me too, besides the fact that I'm helping my baby and I'm getting more vitamin D into my breast milk. Vitamin D, especially in the winter months, helps improve your mood. It helps improve your immune system. It's just really good for you overall. So yeah, I would highly recommend taking a vitamin D supplement. Okay, now, when you are a new mom, you're going to see marketing for milk increasing products. So you'll see like boob bars, boobylicious, delicious cookie bars, luscious, luscious, milky mama milk mixes. And a lot of these snacks are really just oatmeal and flaxseed for the most part. That's what they're selling you, but they're wrapping it in something pink and calling it a luscious, luscious, milky mama booby bar. And then they mark up the price significantly. And a lot of new mothers, you know, they really want to take care of their baby, so they'll buy into buying those bars. I tried them. I also had some sent to me when I was a brand new mom, and it was a nice gift. I definitely ate them. They weren't bad. But what you can do instead is you can just buy organic oatmeal with flax seeds in it. Organic oatmeal with flax seeds is like a tenth of the cost and does the same thing. You're welcome. Make sure you do buy organic though, because with oatmeal, I did hear from my pediatrician that oats are one of the worst offenders when it comes to being pesticide ridden. Really sad for all those babies that ate Cheerios growing up. I was probably one of them. It turns out all of those oat products that weren't organic were heavily doused with pesticides. So yeah, organic oatmeal with flax seeds, definitely a better way to go. Another thing I do, Cliff Bars. These are cheaper than the Milky Milky Mama Bars. They're more expensive than the organic oatmeal and flaxseed, but they are a really quick, easy snack when you just finished breastfeeding your baby, put them down for a nap and you're famished. This is what I usually go for. Oh, this nut butter one, really tasty. 
and it has oats and they're all organic and it really does help my milk production. I really have relied on these a lot for like the last yeah year and a half. Well, whatever. I ate Cliff Bars before I got pregnant. Um, what else? The other thing that you can do to get oats and calcium into your diet is the oat milk or almond milk for calcium and then a nice organic oat cereal. I've been doing cereal more lately and it's just it's a really tasty treat and another way that you can sneak more of this nutrition into your diet. Super quick and easy, put the baby down for a nap and boom it's already ready. So yeah, calcium from oat milk, calcium from almond milk, leafy greens also a good source of calcium, and dairy products. I mean I do eat Greek yogurt sometimes, it's delicious all really important because you are having so much calcium leached out of your body when you are breastfeeding your baby and you got to think about your bone health and your um, dental health while you're breastfeeding a baby too so definitely make sure that while you're taking care of your baby you are taking care of yourself and getting a bunch of calcium in your diet from all of these things all right i think that's everything i hope that's everything that i wanted to cover on nutrition if you liked this video, do me a favor, please subscribe to my channel. I really could use the support. Plus, it just makes my day. You don't even know how excited I get when I see that I've got a new subscriber. I am just enthralled, over the moon excited every time I see somebody subscribing. So thank you again to everybody who has subscribed so far. And thank you for everybody watching these videos and taking care of your babies. And I just wish you the best on your breastfeeding journey. I wish you all the support and, you know, best health and everything to you and your family. All right, take care.